Welcome to Pick Pick Social. My name is Shayo Masori, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to create a virtual photo booth for the very first time. Assuming you've already created your Pick Pick Social account, once you're logged in to create your virtual photo booth event, click on the blue button that says New Event. From there, select Virtual Photo Booth. Put in the event name. The event name doesn't matter, it's internal, something that you're going to use to recognize the event in your account. When you select the start date, make sure you choose the date that you want your virtual photo booth to be accessible to your customers. You can choose the date as well as the time. The end date should be the last day that you want your virtual photo booth event to be available as well as the end time. You're able to create virtual photo booth events that last up to seven days. If you want to create virtual photo booths that last longer than seven days, you need to be on the agency plan of PicPic Social. Under custom domain, you have the ability to select the events.pickpicksocial.com, events.boothlinks.com, or your own custom domain that you can add on here if you have the agency plan. If you're on the market leader plan, you'll only have access to boothlinks.com, which is a gray label domain that you can use if you want to hide from your customers the fact that you're using PickPick Social. This is recommended if you want to make sure that any virtual photo booth customers that you use continue to use you directly. We can skip over the slug and I'll show you what that does at the end of this video. Users with access allows you to assign events to employees that you have in your company so that they can see this particular event within their own PicPic Social account. Now the magic of the virtual photo booth with PicPic Social happens within the experiences step. An experience contains the photo booth templates for a photo, a still photo, a GIF, or a burst. So let's add our first experience to this event. Click the plus button and we already have templates created or experiences created, but we're going to do a new one for this example. So click the blue create button and you'll see you have the option to select a still GIF or burst. So I'm going to put in the name. And we're going to make this a still experience. I'm going to add the square overlay. And once the overlay is added, you'll see you have this photo area that you can move or resize to define how the photo should properly fit in the box. Once that's done, click the check mark to save it. Now we're going to add the portrait version of that overlay. And we'll choose still again. And we'll find the portrait overlay right here. And then lastly, we'll add the burst experiences. Now that we have all our experiences, we can click continue to move to the customization step. For now, we're going to leave the customization alone and we'll skip to the add-on step. And at the add-on step, we're also going to leave this stuff alone and we're going to save it and get you here where you can now see the virtual booth link in your account. And you can copy that link to then load the virtual photo booth in your browser. Here we are with our virtual photo booth loaded and everything is default. So we have the let's get started text. We can click next or click the button to start it and we can choose still GIF or burst. So we'll choose still and we'll press next. And remember we added two different overlays to the event. We added the square 
and then we added the portrait. So we have two different examples. As you can see, there's nothing but an empty box in here, but that's because we didn't upload a preview image. You can add a preview image to make this look better, and we'll do that in the next step. But let's press next so we can continue seeing what the virtual photo booth looks like. Now we're being prompted to allow access to the camera, which I'll click allow. On this particular page, once we give access to the camera, you'll see that you can actually see yourself now. Uh, we have two different, or three different options depending on what type of device you're working on. You can click on the upload icon to actually upload your own picture to the virtual photo booth if you don't actually want to take a picture. Um, and if you're using your cell phone or a smartphone that has a front and rear facing camera, you can click on or press on the flip camera icon to switch to another camera. I'm on my Mac, so I don't have that option. And then obviously we have the camera button to begin the photo booth countdown. All right, so we have our final photo here and we now have the option to retake and save. And then from here, we can take another photo or actually view the photo. All right, so a few things I want to show you right now. Number one, I mentioned about the slug previously that you can update. So let me click on edit so that you can see what that looks like. If you change the slug, if you change the slug, the slug will update the URL. So now this virtual booth link has events.boothlinks.com forward slash demo with Shay, which is what I changed it to. Also, if you choose or change your domain to a different domain, I'm going to use this uh, Shay I am domain and we'll save it again. You'll see that the virtual booth link also updates to that uh, Shay I am domain with the updated slug as well. I'm going to set it back to the default and remove all of that here. Okay, so how do we customize this virtual photo booth to look more like how we want it to? We'll go back and edit this Audrey plus Jim event. And we'll go to the customization step. And under the customization step, we have most of our options for branding. I'm going to upload a booth logo or a logo for the booth rather, as well as a background image to use on the virtual photo booth. I want to change the colors of this button. So I'll click primary button background color and update the color as so. And I want to keep the button color alone, so I'll leave that. And I also want to change the background color for the page to that new color as well. And I'll also change the border color. I'm going to press save. And then I'll refresh the page so that we can see what it looks like. So now with those changes saved, you'll see that the background has been updated as well as our button color has now changed as well. Now the text color on this page is still this black color. Let me show you how to change that. So under the page headline section, I can change the color to white. And I'm actually going to change the color to white on all of them. Once I've changed the colors, I can save the virtual photo booth and then go back and refresh the page. So now you'll see that the text color is now updated as well. You can update all of the text that you'll see on these screens. And all of that stuff can be found under booth. So you'll have your start screen text as well as the mode screen text, which is select your experience, choose below. And then the text for each uh, template or experience that you can that you can update that you can select all right so one of the things that i don't like about the virtual photo booth right now is on this template select screen there is just it's just the empty overlay i want there to be a preview image so that my guest knows what their final photo will look like so in order to edit this i need to go back to the event and go under experiences and edit a specific experience. So for example, in this Audrey plus Jim still, I'm going to edit the still. And I'm going to go under miscellaneous. And under miscellaneous, you'll see this section over here, which is the preview section. You can click on it to upload your own preview file. So this is the preview file that I'm going to upload. And then I'm going to save it. And I'll save it right here. 
Now, once I refresh this page and once I start the virtual photo booth, I'll see that there's now a preview for this particular square. The portrait doesn't have a preview image, but you can update it the same way that we did for this square. So with your virtual photo booth, there's actually a gallery that's going to display all of the GIFs and photos that are captured with your virtual photo booth. Let me show you that now. Once you save your final photo and you choose the option to view my photo, you'll be brought to the gallery. Ah, but look, our gallery is BB. We've got to update it. It's got all of the basic branding. BB, get it? BB. Anyway, to edit the gallery template, go back to your event, and then we're going to go to the final step under add-ons. Under add-ons, we'll click microsite, and then we're going to add a new microsite. We'll call this Audrey plus Jim microsite V4. Now this name is for internal only. None of your customers uh, will ever see this name. However, page title is something that they will see. You'll see I have new microsite template up here, PicPic Social. That's a page title. That's where it's going to be displayed. So here I will put Audrey plus Jim wedding photo booth. Now, right here under sort files, we can choose how we want to sort the files in the virtual photo booth. You can choose to have it sorted by most recent or by the file name. We'll select most recent. If you choose to enable the gallery, you should also include the show link back to the full gallery. Let me show you how that works by saving this first. So I'm going to refresh the page and now you'll see there's a link that says full gallery. Once I click on full gallery, I can see all the photos that I've taken so far in the virtual photo booth. All right, let's continue with the customization of this microsite. We'll go back and edit this event and we'll jump right to add-ons and we'll go right back to microsite. You should still have your template selected. You can just click edit to start modifying it and we'll go to styling. Some of the things I want to make sure I change are the background of this page, as well as the colors of the fonts and the links and the buttons. So I'm going to upload my background image like I did previously, and I'll change the font color to white. And I'm going to also change the link color to white and the visited link color to white. Background position, you, you should leave it as it is, which is fixed. Now under sharing, we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email, and download enabled. I only want to do Facebook, email, and download, so I'll keep those options open or enabled, rather. The social sharing section is going to dictate how your link is previewed once you post it to Facebook or to Twitter. So if you wanted to have a specific title as well as a description, you would make sure you add that information here. Now for the share button position, I like my share button to be below my photo, so I'm going to click below. And I'm going to change the color of my button. Now my button color will be the same as the photo booth buttons. And we'll keep the icon color the same. Under email sharing, you can change the from name and then the, and then the email from address as well as choosing the email template. And we can come back to those in another video. But for now, we're going to click the check mark button to save the microsite. And then we'll go back and refresh. Okay. So now you see we have the background here that we added. And our text color is changed as well as our button colors. Now the next thing I want to do is change the text on this page. And it says social media sharing powered by PicPic Social. I want to change that. How do we do that? From the microsite add-on, click edit. And then click design. Now, under the microsite designer, you can click into the top and you can update the text as you wish. And you can also add your logo here as well.
This is going to be a little bit too big, so I'm going to change the dimensions. And voila, there we go. Now at the very bottom, we can click into it just like we did before and update the text. Now, once we're happy with that, we'll press save and close. And then we'll brought back to the microsite template page. And if we're happy with all the settings here, we can choose to save it as well. So I'm going to refresh the page and now we've got our logo as well as the updated text. Okay. So let's say you're doing a virtual photo booth event and you might have some pretty raunchy people at the event who might be taking some not so appropriate photos. In order to limit the shenanigans, you can turn on the moderation tool. So to turn on the moderation tool, edit your event, go to add-ons, and then under microsites, click edit for that microsite that you're using, and then choose virtual photo booth photos must be approved by operator. We're going to enable that and then save our event. Now we're going to take another picture with the virtual photo booth. And let's save it and see what happens next. We're going to go to view my photo and we're going to go to the full gallery. And what happens now? We don't have anything that's visible in our virtual photo booth. So the reason why it's not visible again, because we know we turned on the moderator. So let me refresh this page. And we now have three photos here that are not visible. In order to make them visible, we need to confirm each one of the photos. And we'll leave the last one unconfirmed just so you can see. So we refresh the page and now we've only got two out of the three photos. But I can go back and confirm the last one and then refresh the page. And now we have all three of them. Before I send you off on your own mission to create virtual photo booths, let's talk about background removal. The PicPic Social Virtual Booth has AI background removal, meaning you can remove someone from their background and place them anywhere that you want. In order to do that, we're going to edit the event. We'll go to experiences. We're going to, and we're going to edit this still experience. Under the backgrounds tab is where you'll have the ability to edit these settings. If you don't have access to these settings, you're going to need to first add credits to your account. Background removal does require credits that you can purchase. Once you have credits available, click on the plus button and then choose a static background and then choose a preview so that we can show our fine folks what their photo is going to look like after they do the background removal. And we'll upload the actual background image, which is going to be a square in this case. The background itself that you upload needs to have the same dimensions of the area that will be that will be replacing it in the actual photo. So if your photo area is 300 by 300, your background image itself needs to be 300 by 300. So let's press apply. And we'll save the event. We'll save the experience rather, and then we'll save the event. And now we're going to go back to the booth and try it all again. All right. So the background removal was placed under the square experience specifically. So we'll choose that one and press next. All right. Come on. Let's put on the specs for this one. All right, so now with our final picture captured, we'll click the background option that we have at the bottom. And voila, like magic. Press next to save it, and we're good to go. If you've got any questions for us, please make sure you reach out to us via the live chat on the website.